Um, as Sarah mentioned, I'm Cass Phillips. I'm the founder of FailCon, which is a global conference on business failure and how we cope with it, how we get over it, how we learn from it. Um, we produce events in probably around 20 cities in about 15 different time zones, um, so I've definitely been there. Quick question for the room, for people in the room. How many of you work with people in at least two different time zones? About 100%. How many of you have missed a meeting or have had someone miss a meeting because of time zones or daylight savings time? Yeah, almost 100%. Uh -huh. Time zones are awful. Um, oh, I have these little slides down here. So I'm talking about alleviating the chronic pain of time zones. Um, something to warn you about this talk, it won't fully alleviate it. They are a hassle, but hopefully some of these tools will help you get through them and handle them a little easier. Um, a quick history of time zones. We all hate them. They were actually invented to make business easier, which I highly doubt. Oh, I skipped ahead. Um, people used to tell time by the sun, a little history thing. They had these sundials in the center of their cities, in the center of their tribes, and everyone in the tribe would know the time because they'd walk up to the sundial and they'd look at it and they'd go, oh, all right, that's the time. Um, that lasted us for thousands of years. Uh, in 1675, uh, we created Greenwich time. Um, that was for sailors that needed a central time to be able to report their longitude to one another. Uh, 200 years later, after that, so in the late 1800s, we finally created time zones that all of us could refer to. It took over 20 years to start them and then to get them applied everywhere. A little interesting history tidbit. Um, the most important thing with all of these time zones is uh, basically preparing for them. Um, oh, it just keeps jumping ahead. Um, it's basically preparing for them. It's what a lot of the first two speakers talked about uh, when, they, when they mentioned trust uh, and creating behaviors that empower trust. Not empowering your employees to know when their meeting in is, is like lesson one. If I walk into a meeting or I'm suddenly called and told, why aren't you on the call right now? I walk into that meeting feeling tense, feeling nervous, feeling like, oh God, do I have all my notes ready? I don't know. And you're immediately disempowering me in that meeting. Vice versa, if I make a meeting and I give someone a wrong time, they don't come prepared. Um, so most importantly, it's really having this empathy for the people that you're working with um, so you can make things as smooth as possible. Um, why is this important? It sounds like everyone here knows why it's important, but in general, just empowering your partners and your employees to show up at their meeting at their best. Um, this is a really easy stuff. Don't mess this up, then you can tackle some of the hard things. My slides are jumping everywhere. Um, so the, my first task, how do you prepare for time zones? Number one, ask where someone is. Don't assume. They might tell you once they're in London, maybe they were traveling, maybe they're traveling now. So before you set a meeting, ask where are you located. Then go and find what time it is there and tell them what time that your meeting will be in their time zone. Make sure when you send an email or when you set up this meeting that you include relevant information. Often people just write 2 p.m. Um, include your time zone. I'm in 2 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I actually don't do this, and it's a good tidbit that I should learn. Don't include daylight savings time. I often mix it up. Is it PDT right now? Is it PST right now? Is it CET right now? Is it CDT right now? I don't include it. I just put PT. Um, I actually even add my city. Hey, it's 2 p.m. PT. That's San Francisco, just so you know. Um, I don't do this one, but it is a good piece of advice. Um, Think about including 24 hour time in your email so that one person thinks it's 8 a.m. their time, one person thinks it was 8 p.m. their other time, and now you're completely across the board wrong. Um, staying one step ahead, include both times. Um, it's too often I have thought it was 10 a.m. my time, 2 p.m. their time, and it was 2 p.m. my time, 10 a.m. their time. Um, if you can put both times in your emails and in your uh, calendar alerts, you can't mix that up. So 2 p.m. Pacific time, that's 10 p.m. in London. Um, the biggest thing, and I've actually made this mistake so often, I've also agreed to it by accident. Um, know what these times are gonna mean for them. Don't propose a time that doesn't make sense. Uh, if someone that I'm working with proposes a time, and this is probably true with many people in this room, I like to be giving and I like to say yes. Like, oh, that's the time that works for you. Sure, I'll make it work. Which then ends up with me having a call at 6.30 in the morning or midnight and I thought I could do it, and then I wake up and I'm kind of like, oh God, I have this call now, and I'm, I said yes, all right. Um, you can avoid that whole hassle by looking what time it is and thinking about what is this gonna mean for the other person? Let me make sure that I propose a time that actually makes sense. 
Um, a helpful little tip, a globally acceptable time. I don't ever schedule meetings between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. in my calendar because I know that that is when all of my international partners could have a meeting. So I will never schedule a local meeting, a San Francisco meeting, between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. This includes doctor visits. This includes meeting at, meetings at work, uh, in the office. I guess this talk is an exception. I didn't really think about that. Oh, well. Um, but in general, between about 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. is usually pretty good for most of the world. You can see here a quick chart. 8 a.m. in San Francisco is 11 a.m. in New York, is 5 p.m. in France, is 8.30 in India, thanks India, is 11 in China. Did I just skip another slide? Nope. Okay. Uh, this is a tiny little like common courtesy. I totally agree that faces are great. So these speakers that said this have faces. However, don't surprise people with faces. I too often get on an 8 a.m. call and I look like this and I have my pajamas on and I'm sipping my coffee and they video chat me and I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Um, just prep people like, hey, we're gonna have a video call at 8.30 tomorrow. It's a video call. Um, sometimes I think you can also do just voice chats. I think sometimes it's okay. I agree, collaboration harder or inf uh, informative harder, but I think it's okay sometimes. Um, dealing with daylight savings time. I hate daylight savings time. I don't understand why we still do it. Um, but some things to help. I still miss meetings. Um, announce daylight savings time to everybody in your company and everybody you work with. Send an email the day before. Post signs ahead of time. Hopefully if you forgot that you had a meeting scheduled next week that now the time is all wonky, someone will remind you. Um, I actually put a daylight savings time alert on my phone and it gives me a little buzz and is like, check your meetings over the next week to make sure they're all still the time that you think they are. Because often I will have scheduled it for 9.30 and now it's 8.30. Um, probably everyone does this, but use actual Google Calendar invites that are synced. Usually they'll adjust for you, sometimes they won't. So I still do that second thing where check that your calendar has the appropriate time. Some quick tools, I bet most of you use these, but um, don't use that box, that's not a good tool anymore. Um, check the internet, the internet's your friend. There's a great website called everytimezone.com. Um, it'll, it'll tell you uh, what time it is anywhere. You can make your own little chart of like which cities are important to you. So you can literally like open it, see the cities that are important, close it. I actually love Google. I literally will just write current time in Amsterdam, current time in London, and it'll pop up what time it is right now in London as I'm watching it. Um, you can also add a world clock right next to your calendar, which will tell you all the useful times that you need. So you can create a little list of all the times, uh, or all the locations that you do business in. Uh, this is a labs feature, it's under settings. Um, this is really cool. I actually didn't know about this. Sarah introduced this to me for this talk. You can actually add another set of times in your calendar uh, under show time zones. So you can select the time zones that are useful. So literally as you're scheduling your meeting, you don't need to go current time in London on Google. It will literally show up right on your calendar. This is awesome. I don't do this. Thank you, Sarah, for this tip to me for this talk. This is a really cool one that I hadn't actually thought about until I started at a, a new job I'm at now and they do that there, this there. Um, oh my gosh. Is to recognize the holidays that are important around the world. Uh, it is easy enough for you to put a meeting on the calendar and someone to say, oh, it's actually a national holiday. But it's so cool when you can write an email to them saying, hey, I recognize next Monday is a day off for you. Let's do this meeting on Tuesday. Suddenly, as these earlier speakers talked about, where you're empowering them with like trust, you're showing a behavior of empathy, that you know where they're coming from. Um, doing a little bit of research ahead of time and putting these, calendar, these dates publicly on your company calendar so they even see, hey, that's cool. They have the National Bolivia holiday on their calendar. They already knew about that. Awesome. Um, empowers them to feel like they are welcome in your company and they are someone that you've done your research, you understand their calendar and you are ready to work with them and you recognize that they will not be working that day and you don't expect them to work. Um, that's just a great kind of common courtesy that's really nice to, to add to your calendars and help with meeting scheduling. So as a quick kind of summary, um, be prepared for this communication. No. Uh, be prepared, it's not silly, um, it's very easy to do. If you can get these easy things right ahead of time, 
you don't need to worry about, or you can empower yourself to be ready for the hard things like collaboration, like these earlier guys talked about. This is just the technology. Don't get hung up on the technology. Um, it allows everyone to arrive to these meetings at their best, um, which is really what will empower them to do the best for you. Uh, as a quick summary, I'm Cass Phillips. I'm the founder of FailCon. I am at Web Wallflower on Twitter. Uh, and you can catch me at normally Pacific Standard Time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>